My name is Rudolf Rassendel. I used to be lazy but I should explain that I had not been lazy all my life. I had studied hard and learned a lot when I was at a German school and German university. I spoke German as well as I spoke English, and I also knew how to speak French, Italian and Spanish. I was good with a gun and a strong swordsman. I was also very good at riding a horse. I will tell you a strange story that happened to me that changed my life. I was eating breakfast in the dining room of my brother's house one sunny morning, thinking about what I would do that week, when my brother's wife Rose came into the room. Rudolf, you're 29 years old. Are you ever going to do anything useful? Rose. Why should I do anything? I have nearly enough money to do anything I want to, no one ever has quite enough money to do that, of course, and I enjoy an important position in society, my brother's Lord Burleston and you are a countess. But you've done nothing except... Be lazy. It's true. I'm a member of the Rassendel family and our family don't need to do things. Robert, I'm so happy you're back. What's the matter, my dear? She's angry because she thinks I don't do anything. It's not just your red hair that makes you different from your brother. He also realizes his position in society has responsibilities. You only see opportunities in yours. To a man like me, opportunities are responsibilities. Good, because I have some news for you. Sir Jacob Borrowdale tells me he'll offer you a real opportunity. He's going to be an ambassador in six months' time. And he says he's happy for you to work for him. I hope you will take this job, Rudolf. If in six months' time I'm in a position to take this job, then I'll certainly say yes. Oh. Rudolf, how good of you. Where will he be working? Sir Jacob doesn't know which country it will be, but he's sure it'll be a good embassy. For you I'll do it, even if it's a terrible embassy. Rudolph, you should know that Rose doesn't want to plan your life. She only wants you to do your duty, and make useful thing in your life. I know brother. She is right. Do not worry about me. Mm -hmm. Brother. Do you know something about the Elfbergs family in Ruritania? Of course. Our family have always had an interest in that country, because in 1733, Countess Amelia Rosendel married a member of the Ruritanian royal family, the Elfbergs. In fact I have paintings of her, and her descendants look. Many of them have the same red hair and straight noses as the Elfbergs. You are the latest one, to have the appearance of the Ruritanian royal family. Oh. That is interesting. I think I should visit the coronation. Good morning. Where are you going, Rudolph? I thought about your talk. So I decided to go to the Alps to write a book. You're going to write a book? 
That would be such a good thing to do, wouldn't it, Robert? Yes, indeed. Writing a book's the best way to get into politics. You're right. Rudolph Bertrand What a surprise I have missed you so much Rudolph Welcome Rudolph to Paris Thank you George I missed you guys You do not used to come here In fact I was going to Ruritania to attend the coronation but as my uncle William always said that no man should ever pass through Paris without spending 24 hours in the city, so I took his advice and booked a night at the Continental Hotel. I know a good restaurant close to here. Let's go. We've had quite a few important people visiting the city recently. Anyone I'd know. Well, I met Antoinette de Maubon today. You've probably heard of her. She's a lady who's well known for her wealth and ambition. But she's leaving Paris today, we don't know where she's going to next. So why did she come to Paris? She was a guest of the Duke of Strelsau. I met him at the embassy yesterday. He's the half-brother to the King of Ruritania. People say he was his father's favorite son. He's gone back for the coronation, although I don't think he'll enjoy it very much because he probably wishes he were the king. I don't think he likes being only a duke. I hear he's a clever man, though. He's extremely clever, I'd say. You have an important person to travel with. That's Antoinette de Maubon and she's also going to Dresden. The newspaper described the excitement in the country and in particular the capital city, Strelsau where it said all the hotels were full with people who wanted to see the event. On reading this, I decided it would be best to stop at Zenda, a small town 80 kilometers from the capital, and about 10 kilometers from the border. Are you from here, sir? No, I am from England. Welcome, sir, to Ruritania. Thank you, my lady. So what you think about your new king? 
I don't know. I prefer a Duke Michael. Duke Michael? But why? We all know Duke Michael. He's always lived in Ruritania and he cares about the people, so people like him. As for the king, well, he's almost a stranger. He's been abroad for most of his life and not many people even know what he looks like. Now the king's staying in a hunting lodge in the forest, very near to Zenda. From there he'll travel to the capital for his coronation. I wish he'd stay there in the forest. People say he only likes hunting and good food. He should let the Duke become our king. And there are many others who think the same. Well I don't like Duke Michael. They say the king has red hair, just like you. Many men have red hair like me. How do you know the king has red hair? Johan, the Duke's servant, told me. He's seen the king at the hunting lodge. But why is the king here, if it's the Duke's land? The Duke invited him, sir. The Duke's in Strolsa, preparing for the coronation. So they are good friends. I don't know if you can be good friends if you want the same thing. What do you mean? Duke Michael would like to be king, too, I'm sure. Well, I feel quite sorry for the Duke, but it's right that the older brother becomes king. Who's talking of the Duke? We have a guest, Johan. What's the matter? Johan. This gentleman's come to our country to see the coronation. It's the red hair. We don't often see it in our country unless you're part of the king's family, the Elfbergs. Many of them have red hair. Good evening, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't expect to see any new guests here. Don't worry. It's late and time I went to bed. I wish you all a good night. Thank you, ladies for our conversation. Sir, have you ever seen our king? No, I've never seen him, but I hope to do so on Wednesday at the coronation. Good morning, my lady. Who? Mr. Rasendel, good morning. Where are you going? I should go now, my lady. Thank you for your hospitality. Mr. Rasendel, you can stay in my sister's house. She is married to a wealthy trader and she invited me to stay with them for coronation but I was unable to go. Thank you, Johan. I will call her to expect you today. I decided that I still wanted to see the forest where the king was staying, so first I planned to walk for 16 kilometers through the forest to the next station along the line, where I could catch a train to the capital. Soon I reached the dark forest and I walked for about an hour, pleased that the tall trees gave me cool shade, not much sun reached the ground through the many leaves. It was a beautiful place and after a time I decided to rest by lying against one of the enormous trees. It was so quiet and peaceful in the forest that I soon fell into a deep sleep, forgetting all about the train I should have caught to Strolsa and my luggage that would be waiting at the station. Why look at him? It's amazing. He looks just like the king. He's about the same height as the king, too. This really is extraordinary. What's your name, sir? Perhaps you can tell me what your names are first. Of course. This is Colonel Sept, and my name's Fritz von Tarnheim. We both work for the king of Ruritania. I'm Rudolf Rassendel. I'm a traveler from England and was an officer in the Queen's army. Well, we're officers for our king, so we understand each other well. 
Restendal, Restendal. I know. Are you one of the Burlestons? My brother's the new Lord Burleston. So, do I really look like the king? You could be twins. Although you look like identical twins, you do not have identical personalities or skills. You two seem very different. If you were an officer for the Queen's army, Restendal, you must be good with a sword. Is the king not a fighting man? The king likes to live well. Let's say he prefers eating to action, but he's a con man, and he's our king. We would do anything for him. Perhaps we are alike then. Because I like to have an easy life, too. Fritz? Where are you, Fritz? It's the king. He's coming here now. Whoa. 